it's time for Tales from the Swing with Gene and Scott Holden. The hosts of this program are not medical professionals, attorneys, accountants, or other licensed professionals and cannot give medical, legal, or tax advice. Any information or advice given by the hosts is not to be used in place of any medical, legal, tax, or financial advice or diagnosis from a qualified and licensed professional in those fields. Information provided by the hosts is intended for entertainment purposes and do not in any way constitute medical, legal, tax, or financial advice. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Tales from the Swing. My name is Jean Holden. And I'm Scott Holden. And this is episode two. Thank you for coming back. I hope you enjoyed the first episode with Mike Kaplan. That was a lot of fun. It certainly was. Yes. This week, we will be, it will just be Scott and I. Ooh, special. We have a new segment. Which is called Tales from the Date. Yeah, so it's not always easy booking everybody around the holidays. Right. That's really the truth. Right. And we have a couple of guests piled up, but right. just as we get off the ground in a new show, right. we've and, got a little coordination efforts. And Bear with in, us. <laughs> once in a while, we'll just kind of fit it in because it's yeah, fun. Yeah, this is fun also to fun, about. too. It's yes. fun to talk about. Yeah, this is definitely things we want to talk about. That's why, anyway. So then from Tales um, from the Date, we'll go into your... Um, Emails and questions and... Yeah, and it's kind of funny because actually what we're calling Tales from the Date really stems from your questions. But, yes. But anyway, sorry. Sorry, I keep and interrupting. And we um, call the question part, what was it again? Uh, we call that getting personal. Getting personal. Because, you know, you're asking personal questions right. or you're filling out personal ads <laughs> or you're... So anything uh, personal that you would like to share, have a question on, just send Would like to ask us about something Sam. personal or about... Well, you'll get an idea probably by the end of the show of right. the, the questions we're getting asked right. and uh, the answers we're providing. And we'll give you all the information when at the end of where you can send oh, all your questions. Oh, it's Tales at Tales from the Swing. Right, Tales at Tales from the Swing dot com. Yes. A real email address and everything. And now it's time for the sexy news with Gene and Scott Holden. So here we are. I'm very excited about this sexy news story (laughs) because apparently you picked it in response to something I said. Was it the first show or the zero episode show? Probably was the first show. Right. Okay. Now you go to town. This article is um, something I found off of um, Daily Extra. Now, it's from Tuesday, November 29th, and it's um, by Nico Bell. And its title is, Is Asexuality a Sexual Orientation? Okay. Now, and the reason you picked this is because of the comment that I made as we were talking. We were talking about a comedian who had been on Keith and the Girl Mm -hmm. and who made what I thought was a brilliant observation. He said, you know, with LGBTQ, mm-hmm. and now they want to, they're trying to continuously show, shove like subdivisional letters onto this, <laughs> this ever, all right. Ever growing. And for me, I'll, I stop at Q. And I had reservations with Q, but I'll let it go because I get that. Yeah. It belongs there. Yeah. But Q is a part of all of it. Yeah. Some people think it's questioning. I don't think so. I think it's queer, and because most of the queer people, you know, a lot of people identify as queer since right. the nineties, and right. why take that away? Right. I get that, and I get the rationale for identifying as queer right. because, in their mind, sexuality is a fluid, fluid spectrum, and some people are just kind of queer <laughs> on that spectrum. Um, okay, that's fine. But his observation was that they're they want they want to shove it, they want to make it LGP. LGBTQA for asexual. Right. And he was like, why do we get them? <laughs> and I am completely on the same boat. And the more I think about it and the more 
I've studied this article, you know, and whatever. The more I am firm on this, we don't right. like I. I disagree fundamentally with a lot of the premise of this, and I'm prepared to rip in. Right now, so I let's have, go. I Bring have it mixed. on. <laughs> Asexuals should not be a class. Now, were, I have here's my feeling: I they're frigid. Mixed. They're just fucking frigid. But we have to. We have to read the article. Now, <laughs> okay, I'm going to read, read the article. It. I'm going to read it. You can comment, but you have to promise you let me read a whole. Yes, bunch but I'm going to. You have to promise I can now, chime in because I'm going to need to. I, I will I give you. Roll back. I will give you some some of my ideas about it. Okay. As we I, go, or now? No, a, a little bit now. She's going to let me tell you something, folks. Get ready for the good cop here. Here comes have, good cop. She's going to try and cover our ba- <laughs> save our bacon here with the good cop stuff. I don't think I, it's I good or bad. You, I assure I think, you, bad cop right here. At least on the asexual issue. I think it. Um, I don't think it's neither good nor bad. I just think some people just have a chemical imbalance. Maybe <laughs> it could be a mental block of something. Okay, there you go. Like, it see, be... you jump right into their critic the criticism that annoys them the most. Yeah, but but I'm not done. Okay. It could be some sort of um, abuse that went on, and they have some sort of block of mm-hmm. some sort. That's the, that's, uh, so, I, I wish to also point out that is a common myth about porn stars. Okay. That they're we're damaged not in about some porn way. Stars. It could be and a, that they're, someone you know, of any profession. And that they're have that. not really happy. Yeah. And you know, mm-hmm. they yeah, feel but, ashamed of their work. Some, However, all the studies have found that to be the opposite. I know, but I'm just talking about someone that might, that might not want to have sex. Why don't we read the scared. article? And okay. since the article is essentially taking a pro position, yes. I will take the con. So let's go to <laughs> Nico Bell, Nico Bell's article. Yeah, where is it? Okay. Thank it you, Nico, first of all. It is the Daily Extra. Um, it was it dailyextra.com or whatever? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Daily, and it's extra with no E. Yeah, it's a, the X. Okay, just T-R-A. the X. Yeah. Okay, and this is from Tuesday, it's a, November it's a, You know, it's a pretty legitimate news service on the internet nowadays. It's one right. of the more. So we start. It's as, at least a legitimate Angie, as BuzzFeed. Angie Byron, award-winning Drupal coder, first woman on the cover of Linux Journal. Wow. Grew to 18,000 Twitter followers, had to come out of the closet twice. Okay. The first time she came out as a lesbian. Okay, now, first off, which do you think was harder? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. The first time she came out as a lesbian. Okay. The usual, you know, the usual, I can't talk, the usual, she says, she got caught trying to look up another girl's skirt when she was little um, in a small town, Minnesota, in, in the 1990s, and she never talked about it. I wish to clearly say she was clearly showing sexual interest <coughs> in a female. Absolutely. Admittedly. So at 20, she fell in love with a girl she met online, mm-hmm. like a punk rock site. Okay. And rather, I, I just like adding that part. You probably yeah. right. for for the, for their first date. Perfectly normal affair. No, Byron, Byron, like it. it's just a punk rock site. Why not? Yeah, flew to Nova Scotia and then she packed up a U-Call and, and moved in with the girl. The Which I think time. is very interesting because we were reading another article earlier how they talk about how millennials are so much more like because of the internet. The right. dating pool is so much, you know, wider now. Right, right. So. Okay, so basically she fell in love with this girl and they went on a vacation and then her next trip was that they moved in together and they stayed together for 17 years. Okay. So, so, so she, and she's a woman. Right, so she's she saying, was in love with a woman. Mm-hmm, and she that, says- I would basically say you're a lesbian. Mm-hmm, in some ways it worked, she says. She mm-hmm. loved the parts where they could, you know, what they, um, it was romantic. You know, they'd bring flowers to each other and mm-hmm. they would talk and- they kissed and so cuddled she liked the and romance. held hands, and they were best friends. And the sex was a problem, it was a sticking point. Okay, is basically what she didn't have the so same for libido. two decades for about two decades, um, decades. decades. I don't know why the D um, decades. We all have moments. Um, she tried to match her wife's libido, so it was a problem. Kind yeah, of so getting into the same sort her of wife groove. Enjoyed a lot of sex. So, um, and she found she couldn't, and. And her sexual peak never came. Um, and she tried to fake it, and it didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, and a few months after their divorce, she basically um, was looking up on Google, like, what's wrong with me? And basically came to the conclusion that she was asexual. Um, and uh, she was like, oh, my God. Okay. So- now, first <clears throat> off, now in nature, right. the term asexual... Means 
You do not need a partner to reproduce. <laughs> okay. Right. So, first of all, I think miss it's we're in a misnomer. Right. Yeah, you know, you're asexual. Or I guess the other term is if you're drone, you're a non-mating part. You're, you're like like in the bee right. community if you're a worker bee, I believe. Like you're you don't have a sexual role. Right. So, you're a drone. <laughs> yeah. But that would be asexual. Okay. So basically, she It's a non-sex. Being. She googled the word or and a being everything... that reproduces on its own. Right. And then she realized, "Oh my god, this is me and everything came it like, went into, you know, I don't know, some craziness." So she said, "Basically, it's not like I wasn't into her," she says. Yeah. "It just wasn't there, but I didn't have the vocabulary." It really screws you up. So she didn't okay. know how to really explain it to her wife. Gotcha. So, that... But hang on. If we're basing... So remember, the fundamental argument here is that we have to add asexual to LGBTQ. I want to keep that. Keep coming back to that because that, I don't want it to be seen that I am anti-asexual. Oh, no, you're not People at all. that identify as but asexual. But you're talking about adding it to the already, the, the community the, yeah, of the LGBTQ kind of that, community. Let's call it a brand, for lack right. of other term. Right. Okay. So basically, and We all sort woman... of know what that is now. Right. You know, we kind of agree. There's a social, you know, agreement. Right. I, obviously, no, there was no meeting. Right. But, you know, it's right. sort of that... That's where the public has settled. Right. So she, this, you know, so Byron, the, you know, the. Um, so hang on. So she's already said she's gay. She's lesbian. Right. She identifies as a lesbian. The Angie, she does. She is a lesbian. Yeah. Now, but then, then she then said she had to come out again. For the first thirty-seven years of her life, Byron had a sexual orientation. Angie, uh, she was a lesbian. Then last year, she came out again as a homo romantic sexual or. Lesbianic ace, okay. she prefers. Let me which tell you is something. Asexual. Let me tell you something. But if there is a, and I am a lefty, as left, you know, I'm left, left one. You're my, very left. I am to the left right. politically. Right. I mean, you're you know, very, I'm like Bernie Sanders. Right. Social. You're very you know, liberal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, Democrat is a weak word for it what is, I am. Right. Right. Me too. Now that said, if there's a problem in our side of the aisle, it's this shit. It's subdividing us to the umpteenth degree to the point there's a reason why we get ridiculed for this shit right. it's because it makes sense See, this is silly now this identity that she's adapted i will say or adopted for herself is kind of bullshit See, now, she's not asexual she's frigid she yeah. doesn't like fucking sex. She doesn't. Get, she doesn't get enjoyment out of sex. But that doesn't mean she's not gay. It just means she's frigid. No, she said she was a lesbianic ace, but you could also be a transgender ace. You don't have to be. You know what I'm saying? I understand. But if you're a transgendered ace, then you're a T. That's if what I'm saying. If you're a lesbian okay. ace, you're an right. L. I'm agreeing with you in that. Because you already are on that fucking chart. If you're a straight person and you don't like sex and you're frigid, you're just called no fun. That's the difference. Isn't this funny? Right. How, like when it's gay and you don't like it, yeah, then maybe... you're asexual. But See, if you're fucking straight and you don't like sex, you're just a fucking wet blanket. Maybe they just want to add an A to all of them, like T A. Fuck the A. Fuck the A. All right. Okay. Fuck so... it in the A. Okay, so the A is stupid. Right, it's so, over. It's like people. It's people being overly sensitive about their own identities. Let's keep going. If they're because... fucking asexual, I, I say, let's make a movement. Let's rebrand asexual to frigid. Okay, and let's see how many of them claim that one. Okay, so let's keep reading because this is a long article. So let me keep going. <laughs> so she's basically Summarize. saying. Um, she came out as a lesbianic ace. She prefers. She likes women, that's for sure. But lingo. Sh- but Again, more lingo. In the candle. She likes the candlelight dinner way, and less in the tearing each other's clothes off way. And yes, she says she's still a lesbian. A little while after um, the interviewer called Ashley again and asked, you know, if she still. Ashley is the subject of this. She, that she's we're the subject, about? Byron. Okay. She asked her if she still had a sexual orientation, and she basically said, um, you know, no one. Had to tell me I like girls in just the same way. No one 
No one had to tell me that. I don't like sex. sex. I don't like sex. Okay. Exactly. But again, see, this is conflation of two things. Asexual is not a sexual orientation. I agree with that. That I agree with. And so, therefore, has no place on the fucking spectrum. And furthermore, again, I don't even see it. I mean, you can. Who knows the causality of why these people don't get turned on by sex? Again, why don't we just call it what they called it for thousands of years? Frigid. Hey, she's frigid. She's no fun. So, Ah. um, I mean, I don't, you know. Um, I'm being a little mean, but so hey. to go, so to go on a little bit in the, in the past in the past year, the asexual community has pushed to be recognized as a sexual orientation. Disagree alongside gay, lesbian, and bisexual people. Fuck you! <laughs> You're already two dozen See, that's researchers. what sucks. These assholes. They want it both ways. We want to be bisexual and asexual. Right. Fuck two you! Two dozen. Stop that. You ju- here's here's my underlying theory. <laughs> These people just need to be special. These people need attention. And this is the way they get it. By well, they're like, uh, remember Howard Howard yeah. Stern back in the day when he used to say about Jews for Jesus. Now yeah. I don't know if this was true, right. but he used to say like, it seemed to him that you know when going to temple, there was a, eventually there was always somebody <laughs> who wanted to be different right. and wanted to just be a pain in the ass, and he would start the Jews for Jesus shit. Right. To which you know. In the Jewish community, they just kind of laughed and shunned him. But yeah, you know, it just feels like asexuality is that. This right. is not a sexual type. So, this is a personality type. So basically, that's really what this is. This isn't a sexual orientation. Right. This is a personality. I wouldn't say it's a personality disorder, but right. it's a personality type. So, it's a person who ain't all that turned on by sex. So. Um, and on. I have a feeling more of that lies in development than in genetics. Okay. And I'm... it probably does lie a lot in, am I gay? Am I straight? Am I, you know, at some point. I think there's a lot of Part mental... of your psychology might go, I'm nothing. I think there's a lot I, of. I, I shun sex because yeah. I'm too confused to deal with it. Maybe there's like an indifference. And a lot so... of that could be left over. From after you come out of the closet. Listen. You were never comfortable with sex to begin with. Maybe because you were gay or straight or whatever. Maybe because your parents didn't get off on sex. You know, like that was sort of the. It was never a thing. Yeah. You didn't get nurtured in that way. Yeah. You know, I hate to say it. A lot of non women, non. I've met quite a few women in my time who don't identify as asexual who didn't seem to like sex very much. Yeah. And I think it had more to do. With parental conditioning, right? That it had to do with anything else. Well, and I think some of it has to do with uh, self-esteem. Some of it has a lot parental of it, conditioning. All, yeah, all well, that stuff comes right. from parental conditioning. Right. right. Views of you know all that comes from your family. It's well, all family of origin yeah. stuff. And as you get older, like your body image and all that stuff. But a yeah. lot of a lot of uh, a lot stems. of it is mental. And I I really do think of a lot of it as chemical imbalance, like hormones and stuff. I really do. As you get older and stuff. So, because a bunch of crazies stand up and say, we all want to be recognized as the same right, crazy so let's together. let's go on with this article. It's we're... sort of, to me, this reminds me of the Pluto as a planet argument. So about two dozen researchers um, sent a um, an open letter to the UK Office of Statistics asking that asexuality be included as a sexual identity option in the 2021 census. And I Which... think they are crazy morons. <laughs> That's stupid. Well, you can't, you know, asexual in and of itself, it even sounds like in this article, is not a sexual type. Well, it's it like is... we give visibility and legitimacy, they say, mm, yeah, to but a sexual that, minority that, that has sh- been doesn't largely, need it. That's been ignored despite making up more than 1% of people or have. Now, we're, we're talking about oh, the UK. Oh, fuck you! This is the Fuck okay. you, you little baby goddamn asexuals who just don't get off on sex. Fuck you. As a bisexual, get in the back of the bus. There are plenty of other people who have to get equal treatment long before your fucked up asses do. Seriously, that just pissed me off. Asexuals, you're whining little cunts. You're not even, you're not a sexual type. You're frigid. 
You don't like sex. That's fine. But you don't get to be a group because of it. Um, Lots of people are assholes. So moving on. We don't have to make asshole a (laughs) sexual type. (laughs) LGBTQA for asshole now. (laughs) Asshole sexual. Same thing it sounds like. Because that's really what it is. This is a bunch of group that needs special attention. And I say, fuck you, asexuals. Bisexuals have a lot more legitimacy. And we get... A lot. We get to move to the front of the line long before you motherfuckers. God damn. It's like when we get to fucking toe-sucking freaks. We want to be recognized, too, well, that's more as than... the toe-suckers. That's... <laughs> so much of the push to classify asexuality oh, but as No, see, orientation... because you can toe-suck and be gay, right. toe-suck and be straight, toe-suck. Right. So it's the same exact thing. Right. Well, they're basically, cla- they want to clarify that asexuality is not... A sexual orientation. They're, it's not a sexual orientation. It's a personality nearly, disorder. Nearly every open ace, it's the a, common community term for asexual, yeah, has whatever. stories about being told they probably have hormone problems. You do. Must have suffered from no, sexual trauma. I don't trauma, think they have any of that sexually stuff. Oppressed, or just haven't tried the it's right just, penis. They say, whatever. you haven't had the right penis No, yet. they haven't done, they've done all those things. I agree. And they don't I agree it. with them wholeheartedly. They're just frigid. They don't like it. They're no fun. They're not in, and it's so funny to me. I, I have to. I'm sorry. I bet you. I just. I'm going to make a broad generalization or a generalization about a bunch of broads. She's a white woman. Because it's funny that I like the romance and the princess, even even as a punk rocker, like she's attracted to the romance and the fantasy right. of love, the romance, but not into the sex. I mean, that sounds like almost, that sounds like so many white women I know. Right. (laughs) I'm sorry. Speaking in general. And basically, the woman says in the argument that you don't know if you like having sex with llamas until you've tried it. And asexuals hear it incessantly. Well, so do bisexuals. We hear all kinds of shit, too. But here's the difference. First, you had a sexual type. You know what I mean? You just don't like sex. And I would wager that there are a lot of intermingling issues in there. Right. That their sexual identity is tied right. up in a lot of this bullshit. Right. So the question is, uh, is it a mental disorder? Asexuals tend no, not... No, I think it's a personality tend, disorder, they, thing, frankly. They tend frankly. not to be distressed or troubled. Originally I said personality type, but they pissed me off so bad right. I'm downgrading them to disorder. Right. Asexuals tend not to be distressed or troubled by their asexuality. Of course um, not. The author says, and don't have levels of mental illness... That can't be explained by social pressure. And they probably don't give a shit that their fucking partner's always horny. They do seem to have higher rates of autism spectrum conditions. Now, there's no clear here, link. Here's, here's the... How did that happen? Who, it, there's no clear because link. Because that's obviously a stats the correlation. are themselves fighting to remove the label of mental illness. See, but that... There you, they're in... So, obviously, when they did whatever study they did... Yeah. On the checklist... Of lists of things that might be, you know, are you this? Are you diabetic? Are you this? autism was on there? Or are you in the spectrum? Yeah, which means that they I, have higher rates of of in the asexual community. Could it possibly be that someone who is autistic is also asexual because of part of that? You know, yeah, yeah. Like you socially... and I both know that we know. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, I could see that because you're in your own thing. It's a very, it's a very, yeah, I could see it's it. An it's an all-encompassing all disease. It's yeah, all exactly. And so to have a sexual to, identity in there, yeah. too, it's, just it's hard, not that you don't, but... It's hard to have, like, a... A, a normal it's hard, life. It's hard to have a relationship in general, so... Um, is asexuality a sexual dysfunction? And studies in asexual women have shown that um, they see, seem to have no difference in sexual arousal. Well, they just don't want to have it. Everything is tricky. Right. These words, disorder, disability, you know what I mean? They're right. all sort of subjective. I mean, I get it. Certain things, once a, once medicine has deemed it that way, I mean, they've said this is this, and a lot of that becomes insurance dogma right. and shit like that, and you have to have a diagnosis if you can have a cure, blah, blah, blah. Right. But a lot of this stuff is a little too sketchy. Well, and comparing is um, sexual dysfunction is temporary usually and can be tied to trauma. Psychological problems, whereas asexuality is pretty much lifelong and immutable. 
I think and... here's my here's my belief. Okay. I think asexuals are a bunch of fucking whiners. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I think they're a bunch of freaking. I'm so glad whiners. I'm not. Asexual, I think they're a bunch so of whiners. I'm... I think they're a. Bu- they feel like a bunch of people who just want to be special. So... We just want to be. We want our special letter. I mean, our special. We want to be a special. When so... in fact, the truth of the matter is. These people are frigid and no fun and wet blankets, and they just don't like being called that. Right. So then gentleman talks about paraphilia, which is an abnormal sexual desire, saying, could asexual have a sort of fetish for nothing? Now, what is that? What is that one? Paraphilia is an abnormal sexual desire. So it could be asexuals have that, like they don't want it. So that's like, it's really abnormal. It's abnormally heightened? Well, it's it's abnormal to not want sex. I believe they call that male. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. No, no, no. It's abnormal to not want sex. That's an abnormal. What What they're proposing is is this the biolo- is this the the biological opposite of this con- the one condition? Right. Could Could asexuals have a sort of fetish for nothing yeah. or a sexual focus on? Something? And could it be chemically that their, right. their body it doesn't is- register as a sexual target? Could it be that they're chemics? I mean, because it is very difficult to talk about yeah. behavior without talking about brain chemistry nowadays. Right. And could it just be they don't, hey, they don't, they don't get enough of that sexual juice right. in their brain or whatever. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, people, See, but now they're talking about me. it. Now they say whatever is going on with it. Now this is kind of goes in with what you were saying about, you know, they could be straight, they can be gay, but listen to so this. So then you have a sexual identity Whatever already. is going on with asexuals, it seems much more like what's going on with straight, gay, and bisexual people, but... They're, they're not even. No, it's not. But asexual, you can be. You can be straight. Straight. I don't get. You can. You be can gay. be straight. Okay. Let me ask you something. What do you think the massive? What do you think the the great hardship you're about to experience if you're a straight person and you're coming out as asexual to people? What do you think? What do you? What do you think the great social impact of that is at a dinner table? I don't table? know. Like, I nothing. think everyone looks at you like you're a weirdo. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, I, uh, we already know that you're no fun. This is no surprise. Right. That would probably be the reaction because it's probably the stiffest blanket at the fuck. It's, <laughs> it's the stiffest guy at the table or a woman at the table. I guarantee right. you. It's the no fun nicks. Yeah. It's the Mika Brzezinski's of the world. I know, right? Although she does seem kind of hot. I bet you she might she be a does. wildcat in bed. She might. She's a little too serious, though. Anyway. So basically, it goes on to... Um, <laughs> All right. My feeling? Uh, my, uh, yeah, this is a really long article. Scott Holden weighs in. <clears throat> Bullshit asexuals. Back to the fucking... Back to the drawing board. I disagree. You don't get to be treated like gay people just because you're asexual. Right. You, you don't... You're not... You don't get what may someday become a protected status. Right. Because... And that's true. Protected status, a minority, a true, the reason people have protected status is so you can't get fired right. for something. I don't know anyone who would fire anyone else for being asexual. Matter of fact, you'd probably have a better chance of getting hired. Oh, look, he doesn't have a sex life. He's just going to work all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, asexuals. You're a bunch of little whiny bitches. That's where I'm weighing in. If you have any problem with that, please write your comments and criticisms to Scott Holt. No, to Tales at Tales from the Swing. We will gladly read them and respond to them as well. Now, there's one last thing in here, and it says the most important message to get across is that, like, being gay, asexuality is not a choice. What? Whatever. Okay. Yeah, but no one's... See, there's no social impact to being asexual. Right. Where's the or else? Where's the I'm going to fire you because you're a faggot? It's not it's, there. Mm. It's no one. Have you ever heard anyone say, I'm going to fire that asexual bastard? Well, I, I that think guy is so not into sex. He's fired. I think it's a very it's a it's um, a strain on relationships, though, because if there's a Possibly. person that's yeah, if you have someone frigid, you leave. That's how it worked in the old, or you cheat. Yeah, that's how it worked in the old days. Hey, my wife doesn't put out, or my husband doesn't is a henpecker, doesn't or he, seem to like me. 
I'll go cheat with the fucking milkman. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is something that's been around forever. Yeah. We can call it asexual now, but it's just people that don't like sex. They don't need a group. They don't, they don't, they, they don't get their whole, they don't get a protected class. It's too like mamby pamby. Right. Where is the asexual Harvey Milk who was gunned down because he was asexual? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying here? Asexuals are whiny little bitches who don't understand. Like don't, do you think their str- little their little crisis is a boutique issue? But don't you think and they, they should just shut the though? fuck up? Don't you think they struggle with not wanting to have sex? No, it said it in the article. Wow, they don't struggle with not having to have sex. I think some. It of them even do. said even in the beginning. I think some of them do. only when they have a partner who actually wants to. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. That's when they run into problems. Oh, you mean the rest of the world isn't <laughs> no fun? I think there's more of a struggle there than not. But anyway. whatever. You know what? I'm just, it just, it pisses me off that they're taking their little boutique issue, something that they can very easily create awareness groups about. Oh, absolutely. Whatever. And they want to be tacked on to the But LGBT they, yeah, they, they want to ride on a group that has literally been oppressed right. and murdered. Right. And murdered. part of the Nazi, the pink triangle right. group, remember? Right. I yeah I like a group totally that has do. legitimately seen suffering at the hands Very of much so. normal and a society. lot of fear a lot of fear lately too. It's only been in the last ten twenty years in this society that we've started to get oh my god you mean they're people right right so yeah so if you to, guys to have wanna... asexuals come and right. whine and complain right I mean, she was gay what the fuck dude Don't, if come you on guys, it's not the same if you guys like want to chime boutique in boutique attention waters <laughs> if you guys want to chime in just send us an email we'd love to hear what you guys think about it and i guess that's the sexy news for this that's week. the sexy news uh, to get to hear me get all hostile <laughs> i wonder if it'll always be like this you can stay hostile. I'll say. Sex. Fuck you, asexuals. You're gonna get. A, you're gonna have fuck to you hear things your, you don't like. Fuck you up your ass. No. Yeah. Oh no, they don't like that. <laughs> they don't like anything. Darn it! Sorry. More for me. <laughs> don't fuck you, asexuals. <laughs> Just how you like it. Not at all. Okay, so now we would usually have a our guest, but this week we will be doing a segment called Tales from the Date. And the idea mm-hmm. here was we got a bunch of que- we got a whole bunch of questions and a whole bunch of them were essentially the same question. Right. How does this work or, you know, like, how do you do, do this do, or, yeah. you know, a general like curiosity about how you become, you know, I guess polyamorous right. or an open relationship or once you're in an open relationship, how do you, I guess, get dates? Right. How, like do, how, you, do, how you do you find, make that work? How do you or, find people? So, so I guess to address that, we've done, we've come up with this little segment. Yeah. All right. So how do we do this, Gene? So, well, I don't know. Where do you think, like, where do you think we should start? I think we should start at the... Let's just assume okay. that you're a couple who's already done the big, the heavy lifting of, hey, let's open up our relationship. I know. Or, we actually hey, had the conversation. Or you just entered into a relationship with someone who's polyamorous and they've dumped this on you. Yes. And you're like, uh, and you decided you're going to try and make it work. Okay. Which was let's... interesting because we actually met a couple just last night. That was like that. That was their story. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so... <clears throat> We're going to assume that you've already had that conversation. Everyone's in agreement. Both partners in that kind of situation. And we're going to just, for the sake of argument, kind of talk about it from our perspective, which are mm-hmm. a uh, opposite sex bisexual couple. Right. Out in the world. Yes. So uh, for us, it started with the internets. Mm-hmm. And the seediest of all places, <laughs> it, was, it, was our, it was Craigslist. Yeah, we started uh, Craigslist. Yeah, and I think a lot of couples do, and, and 
it's natural because there's a personal section right. and there's a lot of ads. And I believe last week we had the uh, question of is Craigslist a good place? And yes, I mean it is, and it, it is. But you have to be careful. Yeah, as we discussed, I don't want to go headlong into that conversation. And again. the people that are listening know why, because there's been plenty of yeah, there's you know, people yeah. have been killed. Right. And, yeah, we so. know all the stories, so just be careful. Keep in mind all those things that that happen with Craigslist and Backpage. At some point, we should talk about what happened at Backpage, but right. maybe, maybe another news article in the future. Oh yeah, because Backpage is like a Craigslist, but they recently got like the owner was arrested and it's sex trafficking crimes and a. Oh my god! I know. I personally have an issue with what I mean. Essentially, he's providing a platform, right? For ads. Right. Personal ads. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. He can control the content to a certain extent, but beyond that, posters are posting content. They're accountable for that content they post. So you feel he should not have... There's even a federal law in place to protect that. Because if you open a blog and then some psycho posts on your blog, you, you can't necessarily be accountable for what people post as their freedom of speech in a platform you've provided. So the man that owns it, he, he, he got arrested? Yeah, he got arrested and a couple of the other partners. And, and, he wasn't and, and tra- involved. It was, they were charging him with trafficking. But he wasn't involved in it, though, was no, he? No, but they're essentially they're charging him for all the clients right. that use the site. Which right. is well, because he gave them the ability to do it. That's which fucked up. This is one of the, this is what they call a test case. Yeah, that's you know? fucked up. Yeah, yeah. And they're, Duh. so they're, you know, they're testing mm. how far they can push the First Amendment wow. at, with regard right. to these trafficking laws, which, you know, hey, anyone who knows from our other show, we play, uh, we play promos. Of oh, yeah, for the Wayne Foundation. The Wayne Foundation, which is an anti-sex trafficking right. site. However, the Wayne Foundation is not anti-sex worker. Right. They're not. And they understand what trafficking laws are and aren't. And they also understand that some trafficking laws are Trojan horses of the right. Right. Exactly. Just trying to, yeah, essentially beat down women and all yeah. that kind of shit. So yeah. I don't know how we got here. I know. <laughs> all that from Craigslist. Right. So, so Craigslist, our first thing was Craigslist. Yeah. And just be careful. Like you do with everything with Craigslist. Yeah. But so we're going to so we started there mm-hmm. and I don't know what it is. I've always had good luck on Craigslist we have had in the past with Craigslist. bands, yeah. with selling gear. This was our first foray into the world of sexual encounters. But, I mean, very quickly we met a couple, like, very close. and, and you know. We did. It, I, I, know, I, I know that our first time, I, I think, can be best summed up as anyone's, like, first time having sex in general. It was very yeah, much the same. It was. It's, like, it's amazing and nerve ra- – it's going in, you're nervous. Yeah. Oh my god, I was so. When it actually nervous. happens, it's amazing and incredible. And but when it's over, you're you just know you were so awkward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. You you, you just. I mean, I did. We feel we felt like we did. A, you know, were we good? Were we good? <laughs> <laughs> and you're probably not because you're yeah. just like so. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> Most of the time, so. right? And uh, yeah. So, but if you're yourself, I mean, it, it's fine. But on that first date, like though that couple w- was already like telling us all the tips, you know, yeah, all the other websites. Now there's several. There's all kinds of dating websites out there. There's dating apps now, and even Tinder. Right. Like we were talking last night, a lot of people have geared Tinder to be used for couples, right. and and you know, you, you, if while scrolling through some of those pictures, you may see a couple. Now, if you stop and read, you may find that, that it is the couple that's wanting the date. Tinder so. is mostly, isn't Tinder considered mostly like to fuck? A hookup back? Yeah, app? it's pretty much that's Tinder. Yeah, but that, not necessarily because look at Damien, our friend Damien. Oh my God, it's true. Damien He met his love. girlfriend and they're he in love and yeah, yeah, like they have a legitimate relationship. That's not, true. It wasn't a hookup. Oh, Damien. So, Cutie I pie. Mean, I, it's... I think any app is what you want to put that's in true. it. That's true. That's true. You know, I if always... you're a person who's only looking to hook up, 
And I you're was, only going to find people that only want to hook up. Right. I just heard tw- like um, I think the Tinder big, is very the big advance with Tinder was it's proximity based. It's a right. proximity based app. So if I have it and you have it and you're only like a mile away and you're looking to fuck or whatever, damn, you know, you'll come up and we can swipe. Left and right, and if we match, should we swipe each other and pretend we're like other people? Like, that would be fun. <laughs> Mislead. I'm what? just up the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> speak of the devil. I mean, we've had. If we're talking about dating, we had a flake out over we the did. weekend. We did have a flake. And out. the funny thing was, like you say that, but we had been talking to this other couple, you know, through a messenger app. Yeah. Everything seems so normal as. Someone pointed out, too good to be true. Right. But it didn't seem that way until post. It seemed normal. Really? It seemed going yeah. well. I didn't think it was too good to be true. Right. It, it, whoever, if they're a scam artist or a picture taker or whatever the fuck they are, or a general, there could just be a genuine couple that got cold feet and chickened out. Yeah. I often suspect that even when they claim they're the woman, they're the guy. <laughs> I wonder why, though. Uh, Just because the woman doesn't want to do it and he's trying to make it happen? More often than not. Another little fact about this, folks. I mean, in in terms of getting dates and coordinating with other couples, if you are a couple, you're going to find that one person is generally going to gravitate to that job. And in most cases, it's the guy. Yeah, and Scott does it. In most cases, it's the guy. Yeah, he does a really good job. You're very thorough. It's because I just try to sense bullshit. I have yeah. a good bullshit detector. Yeah, you're very thorough and you're very you're very good. But then you get and those, I trust you. That's yeah. why you get those weird one offs. It's like, wow, this was so this felt normal. This right. felt like just a normal yeah. pre date interaction, you know, normal kind of questions, nothing off the hook or weird. You know, a standard It was going well. Yeah. Didn't never got the vibe of too good. Right. Like like, oh my God. <laughs> Although they did comment at one point that we seem too good. but We are. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but we didn't flake out. And? Well, because we don't flake out. That's not us. We flaked out once or twice. but Yeah, but it's... The one time I remember where we truly flaked out, it was because we had a massive fight. And the last thing you want to do is oh like God. Was that the go last, on a was date. Was that the last big fight we had? Yeah. That was the worst. Last me. thing you want to do is go on a date, like yeah, after having a huge fight, or like it's like I'm using you now just to get yeah, whatever. and and it just doesn't you're yeah, all of it's messed up. It's all messed up. Yeah, yeah so and that we, yeah, we flew the coop on that. Well, that was the one time we did yeah. definitely but flake out. To but go, we've had to, a lot of flake outs. But to go back to that fight, things have have been different since that fight, so things oh. can turn around. So yeah. I'm, I'm let's we're, face we're, it, in the last few years. How many of those have we had? None. I'm telling you guys, if you think of we have doing none, no, but we have very few. Right, if you think about doing this, I'm once every several you, years, as opposed to right. really you know, give it, really give once it once every month, really give it a try because it, it strengthens your relationship. It really does, and it does because you have no choice but to it, become open and honest with each other about almost everything. Right, and you see your partner happy, you're happy. He's he or she sees you happy. Yeah, it's an all around. Everybody wins. And it's not even like a cuck holding type no, experience. It's not like that but there's sort of nothing happy. like I mean, as long as you feel safe yeah. and trust the very people safe. you are with. It's a wonderful thing. It's a very I mean right. like if especially if they're good looking, I mean, what's better cool. than watching good looking people with your wife or your friend or yeah. your, you and know, then like your lover like, or whatever. like whether they do out to dinner or whatever you do, you like have fun and you just yeah. kind of Extend the re- you extend the relationship and, and it becomes a very fulfilling thing. This is our approach. Not everybody. There are a lot of people who like right. swing parties. Oh yeah, absolutely. Swing clubs. Oh, there's so many different things. Now, and first we'll off, ta- as we've said on the first episode, right. we may travel in that community, but we don't necessarily. We see ourselves as having an open relationship. Right. We hate much of the swinger terminology. Yeah. Like, you know, all that, you know, swing right. swap. But hey, you got to go where the fucking money is. Right. You got to go where <laughs> you right. can't. You got to go somewhere. Right. Fet life is another one, but right. we're not fetish people, so right. like that doesn't necessarily work for us. 
But a lot Although of this some stuff, people would say this is a fetish. Right. You know? A lot of this stuff will come up on the show. Like oh, yeah, we'll yeah, just yeah, yeah. we're going to explore all these things. Yeah. Um, but there's so many. Like there's um, there's clubs. There's parties. Yeah. There's I mean people host things at their house. I mean people. We don't like there's those cruises as much. and a lot of vacation. I mean, in honesty, a lot of that. A lot of us not liking the party was because of the show. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Originally, because of that, yeah. man, because we didn't want to go to right. a party and be like, "Hey, I know that guy." Right. There have been a couple of parties that've been nice, and I'm hoping in the future there'll be some more that are yeah. good. Yeah. But, but not, here's the other thing, folks. I don't ever want to turn off the party thing because I like meeting new people. This is Fun. very important. Most of the times, regardless what people say, you make the rules. You so if you don't feel comfortable, if if you go to a place and you want to shut a door because you're getting it on with a couple or a Whoever, shut the fucking door. You always shut the door if you yeah. want to. Like it's always your. If people tell you that you're rude for shutting the door, tell them to go fuck themselves. You make the rules because that's what they want to do. They want to watch you with the door. See, yes. that's the kind of shit that used to and, always creep me out. Looky lose and freak. Right. So the it's an eye opener. If you're into that, <laughs> fine, then go for it. But if you're not, yeah, it's okay. That, it's, that it's, wasn't all bag, baby. It's okay to tell the person, you know, I don't really like that, and we're going to close the door, and then you do it. There's also a lot of nudity. There's a lot Absolutely. of there's, there's a lot of exhibitionism in, now, in the community. Can I be honest with you? I'm kind of like getting okay with that as I become I know, more into it. I'm I know like, you are, but like, well, and I'm okay with it too. But like, not all the are, time. There are people who are a little too into it. Oh yeah, I'm more. And I really think it's just for them a way. But they so they can sample your goods before they right. have to do it. And I, I think that's all. Right. I think it's all sort of underhanded. But just like another thing, like you just become like, like you, I don't know, things happen that you will not believe. You become more. <laughs> You'll have a lot to talk about. More secure. I mean, and that's how we started the show. When you become so more secure. Fucking, so it's so fucking funny. When you become more secure, you like, okay, well, I'm not naked. That's okay. It, it, you just like it, a little bit at a time, it becomes not an issue. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of nice. And here's an upside. It's liberating is what it is. You could meet a couple like we met the other night who were so amazing. Oh, my God. And I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of them in the future. I hope so. Because they were just so much fun. They were so – and they – They were you know, funny. And it's – I'm hoping we can actually get them on the show at some point. I, yeah, I like that. And they're the type of people I think would do it. They're people that like – we were like laughing together and we had like a really cool um rapport. Yeah, we had a really cool rapport. And then next thing you know, she's like in these skimpy little outfits, kind and she of was, dancing, like, dancing and, and very sexy, but not like it did, even though while it was a show, it didn't feel like it. It didn't. It didn't. She was very comfortable. Yeah, nice. it was yeah, a lot of yeah. fun. It was very hot. And I love all that dancing yeah. stuff. And she was funny. She she had a mouth on her like like Jenny and Noel from right. Driving with Jenny, which I like. Right. She was she, cool. She could dish it. Yeah, well. and, I and then we're that. watching Mr. Hanky. Yeah, we were just... <laughs> and then we were watching porn. <laughs> yeah, and so and then we were watching girl porn, which is even better. Mm. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then we all had sex, which well, is even yeah. better. Well, at that moment, it was better. You know, the guy sex, the guy porn might have been fine too, but at the moment, the girl porn was nice. Yeah, that's a. I I'm a big believer in lesbian porn as an icebreaker because usually nobody doesn't like it. You know, no one's going to say, hey, turn that lesbian porn right. off. That's horrible. We, um, and it's I th- always I think erotic can, and pretty and nice. And, you know, I think hot. I, I think I can digress about beautiful it. people having right. sex is always good. Male, female, female, male, male, male. It doesn't matter. It's hot. Right. Just guys are afraid of it. Ooh, uh, I'm being like gay if I look at it. Oh. See, now the couple last night said they didn't really partake in that. But again, that's more context. And it wasn't the couple. It was more, okay, so they're dating mm-hmm. her place. But she, this is all new to her. She's, she's Oh, that's is, true. This is so funny. This, to me, it was- This woman was like really It was like cool a woman though. who had just come out of a fucking disaster yeah. of a relationship. It reminded me so much of fucking Stephen King's book. Uh, what do you call oh, it? no. That fucking, the, the one about JFK, man. Because in that book, there's- Oh, 19, um uh 11 7 or 11 oh yeah 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 the date of the when kennedy was killed is the name of the 11 book. something 64 yeah uh i want to say 17 but that's because that's your birthday all right well i'll keep talking i'll figure it out uh, maybe 11 23 64 i think that might be right yeah um I think that's right because it's when kennedy was shot 
Uh, yeah, in that book, there's a very intense. Yeah, eleven twenty three. There's 64. an intense relationship like that. that really? W- yeah, like a very fucked up relationship that that. I mean, very different, but it seemed to have the same sort of underpinnings. Right. Like he didn't become violent and try and kill any. Like is it her ex? But you know, just a lot of weird sickness, yeah. if you will. And but she was like, she's yeah, going through a second. You know, yeah. like talk about midlife crisis. But this is like her, a yeah. midlife like she's fucking everything that moves. She's having so much fun. This woman, <laughs> yeah, Good for and, her. and she she partnered up with a guy yeah. who who was a you know. Has a background, you know, has been in the lifestyle. and Yeah, and that was their deal and right he, from the He beginning. opened up. He's like, hey, I, you know, I don't know, but this is what I want. This is how I want to proceed with my life and yeah. with my dating. If you're not into it, great. If you're not, then fine. You know, and smart. Because, man, for them. Right seems, out of the gate. It's, for them, it seems to be working. Right. Out. And <laughs> there needs to be honesty when you're doing this oh, all yeah, from yeah. right from the beginning. Because yeah. that's what the... That's the the main ingredient. Yeah, is yeah. honesty. Yeah, if you know, and the other is communication, and there's others, but honesty is a, is like the number one thing. Yeah, you have to be you know, you have to be honest about everything. And and just so you know, yes, we date a lot of couples, but we'll date some singles too. We do too. <laughs> so if you're single out there, you know, don't, <laughs> no. don't worry, we don't discriminate. <laughs> We're always looking for that unicorn as well. Everyone's always, although it's truly the is this the, us trying to get a date? It's the true <laughs> by male. Single by male, I think, is far more of a unicorn than the female, and here's why. Because most of them are just trying to fuck your wife. But can I tell you? <laughs> They're if, claiming by yeah. to, for opportunity. Yeah, there are so, some by men that are so sexy, but oh, if you are, bring it on. But make sure you're really by. <sighs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Now, if there are any single by men, I like that too. And I just love the fact now that we can talk about this so fucking openly it without is. any problem. It's awesome. So there's various websites, dating apps, right. all kinds of shit. And as you can see, like we were talking about Tinder before, even more traditional or, I don't know, centrist mm-hmm. type dating sites are being adapted right. to uh, meet other people. And again, there's also the personal sites like your craigslist and your back pages and all that stuff but just you know and your local newspaper yeah <laughs> i guess but uh yeah do you still do that on papers probably mm, probably not a lot i can't see it hey but if you want to put the effort in try it cast a lot of nets <laughs> <laughs> put an ad out maybe yeah. you'll get a, a good response. fisherman casts mm-hmm. a lot of nets right so don't, He'll let know. us know how it's going too. Send yeah, us yeah. Email. Tell, we'd us, love to tell hear. us your adventures. Yeah, we'd love to hear we're, them. We're kind of pushing you down, yeah. the and road. maybe something new that you found out. Yeah, yeah. So you can clue us in. And if you're a unicorn, by all means, so, <laughs> and the greater. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Uh, it's just like I'm not even that unicorn guy, if you will. Like, I'll sure I would never say no, but like, I don't need that thing. Yeah. I guess maybe it's because I'm bi and I'm pretty flexible right. that way. But to so many guys, that's like oh, the be all. Yeah. And having another girl? Yeah. And again, most of them don't deserve it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, um. So please, again, bisexual. And here's another thing bisexual solidarity. Yes. There is not enough bisexual solidarity. Yeah. There's not em- enough solidarity <clears throat> among bisexual <throat> women and bisexual men. They treat each other like almost different species. Really? Yeah, totally. It is so, well, first of all, it's I mean it goes I mean you can go back to chasing Amy, the chasing Amy rap. Right. You know, it's socially chic to be lesbian. Shit, it'll get you more dates. Guys think you're hotter. Right. Because they struggle with the delusion that you'll fuck them with another girl because you're gay, so surely you would. Right. Because you need a cock eventually. Yeah, you need that deep dicking. <laughs> well, regardless, my point being, yeah, you know, so there's this, and I don't know if it's because they see themselves as being socially acceptable that they believe the Kool Aid put out right. by guys that, oh, yeah, it's natural for girls to be gay. 
which is essentially what they're saying, but right. not guys, <laughs> which is so fucking stupid. That's so stupid. As they secretly look to suck cock all over the internet. Hey, yeah. you want to know how much bisexuality there is, folks? Open up Craigslist. Spend 20 minutes going through the personal ads in the section they call the no strings section or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> because you're going to see a lot of married men looking to suck cock and have their cock sucked by men and fucked in the ass mm. and be ass fucked by men. So It makes me sad that they can't be open with their wives. And so many of them married. Can't they be open with their wives? No. Eventually, hopefully. It's a stigma. <sighs> as long as nobody comes out, this is going to be the fucking problem. Mm. Maybe their wives know. Some do, some don't. Yeah. Would you suspect your your husband, your your bow hunk husband, was sucking cock on the side? Um, I suspect. Think about some of the men we've met. I suspect there's signs. Of course, there's signs. I would. Women, women are smart. Women smart. Women figure it out. Oh yeah. Women are smart, but you'd be surprised the blind spot they have for that mm. committed man. Guys are really good at hiding being gay. Okay, I would. They're maybe, really good. I at would it. maybe they would suspect that they were cheating with a woman before a man. It's very simple. Here's another way: go through your man's fucking internet porn. Look at what he's looking at. I yeah, guarantee you're go gonna to... you're gonna find some, yeah. you know, hmm, tranny porn or transsexual mm-hmm. porn. Uh, um, hmm, bisexual porn. What is this? All right. So. Well, some men, not not all men, are into that. Granted, if you suspect, I if say. you suspect, it's hard to look at your husband's porn though, because you have to get into it, you have to log in. Oh, have you done that? No, actually, I can honestly <sighs> say I never have. No, but you, sp- you sound like you speak from expertise. No. And and let me tell you something, folks. As we've talked about, I think. Yeah, we we weren't always perfect. We yeah, were see, we, things weren't always hunky dory between us. We we have not gotten into this, this with um. With the audience, I this think whole... we did briefly. We well, did briefly, in the Mike Kaplan show. We did actually. Yeah, a, we kind of gave a summary of like a, about a summary a certain but amount. Or you know, we had lawyer, We were lawyered up. We were ready. To, we were ready we to were. divorce. We were pretty much done. Yeah, and it was sad. We gave it one more shot. Yep. And even that, like, took a while to figure that out. It took a while. So it's been well, a while. We hung in there. Wow. And now it's... we talk about how we fuck other couples. And we do. <laughs> on the internet it's a lot of fun to we inspire do, you to do likewise right. or at least not be afraid we fuck other couples to on think the about internet. it it's what? not in, no, on the internet that's on the internet <laughs> yes i didn't mean that in no, real life we no. don't fuck on the internet that'd you can't see us fucking on the internet no that'd be weird <laughs> that'd be weird yeah we're not that stupid no <laughs> anyway well if you if there's something you heard, uh, we, you have a question, just yeah, let us know. Yeah. And if you have a story, let us know. I think we know. can wrap up Tales from the Dates. Yeah, Tales from the Dates. <laughs> Start to drag out yeah. here. But, you know, we, we, we might come across. This tale's know. a little too long. <laughs> if, if we come up with another one, we'll, you know, more stick like it in epic somehow. Epic from the date. The ep- <laughs> so we, we might have a date, and we just want to tell you guys about it. So yeah. And come across it again. Okay, out there, folks. You can think what you want. You can think that we're moral degenerates. You can think we're crazy. But here's the truth. Oh, no. If we're listening. a very committed couple. We love each other. We've been married for 20 years. We've been together since 1990. Right. Our sex life and our lives, personal lives, have never been better than they are right now, I would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I could say, without even hesitating. Oh, no. It's great. Yeah. Because of the show, because of our lifestyle, because of everything. Because, right. of, because of the choices we've we're made in the last several years. We're able to be who we years. really are. Yeah, for the first time in our lives, mm-hmm. openly, with no shame. And it's, you know, it's amazing as we thought we were, but we really weren't. <laughs> <laughs> we so, weren't being honest. So we go many so lives. much, so deep. So many so deep. weirdnesses. So go deep down inside of you and really figure yeah. out who you are. And just be honest with the person you're with. Yep. Just be honest with the person you're with now, right now, and do it. Right now and do it. And there you go. That's Tales from the Date. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, here's our do- dorky little theme. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's funny. We ha- we still have to answer more questions. Right. So now coming out of our tales from the date, which this particular one, we ra- we couched it in a bunch of questions that we got, which were the most basic and most popular. 
But now, we're going to have more questions. So here we go with our next segment we like to call Getting Personal. It's time for Getting Personal on Tales from the Swing. We have a message today from a young lady who has a question regarding mm-hmm. having a sex. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Does she need to know? How's that work? No. What's it like? So basically, here we go. Are you going to summarize or read? I'm going to summarize it. I'm okay. going to summarize it. Okay. So basically, um, aren't you afraid of getting a disease from having so many partners and really because you don't know anything really you don't know how many other partners that your partner that your partners now this is a very popular question once you get into this shit and you hear this a lot this is like the it's so funny too because if you go to our other show when Susie's ex Susie Q we're talking about I'm sorry he did I I led the witness to a question that I knew I was going to get the answer to, right. and it's the old: you only have so much love and affection in your in your bottle. Right. The theory that there's only so much love, sex, and fun in this bottle, and if you shake it out and if you distribute it all over the place, you'll have none left. Right. Which is total bullshit because I love my daughter, I love my son, I love you. Right. I love my family. I love right. friends. All of that is love and real love. Right. It's just not necessarily sex love, but you know what I mean? So you have the capacity to love multiple people. Oh, my God. That's so true. Yeah, so this idea, where did I, where am I going with well, this? Well, the STD thing, though. Yeah. Is well, so. Uh, diseases. Yeah. I'm going out of a day. Right. Once you get into an open relationship, I think that you are, you are far more likely to end up getting diseases like that in a monogamous relationship. And I totally agree. Because there, you're not talking. You're not talking at all. Yeah. Oh, I know why I was on a tangent because there are some very popular things you hear when you get into this kind of lifestyle. If you have multiple partners, you know, you know, Aren't you spray afraid of spreading yourself too thin or so, you know, those kind of theories right. that like they really revolve around questions of jealousy, underlying questions of jealousy, but they're presented as you only have so much love in a bottle. You know, don't you want to give it to just the one person? Yeah. So that's a popular myth. Right. The other popular myth is you're going to get diseases because you're with multiple partners and you don't know which partners your multiple partners were with. Most polyamorous couples discuss all of this shit beforehand. Right. So if a part, not all polyamorous relationships are the same. Not everybody has outside partners individually. Right. Some do, some don't. You know, it's, it's all... And that's the beauty of these relationships. They're all, they discuss all these... All plan- of it is discussed. Right. Yeah, so you have... So you know... What the rules are. Right. Yeah. And if you don't know, what, you can negotiate. Why not? Right. Hey. I don't know. But the point is that the constant communication and dialogue, we're in a typically. Now, we're not saying that in, a monog- in all monogamous that, that, relationships, you're not talking. That's so we're not mar- even much saying more that. often. All right. of the things that we just discussed are sort of assumed up front. Right. And so, therefore, never discussed. Right. And so, therefore, a big area for problems. Right. And if there is a problem, it's not talked about. And maybe and usually the what happens is go, one partner goes and cheats goes on the other. Goes outside and maybe exactly. doesn't use protection and then there's a problem. Or she's a prostitute. Like, yeah. Whatever the case is. Because normally be. if you're going to cheat on your wife, you don't tell her first. Yeah. Very rare. It's like, sweetie, I'm going to go cheat. Just and here's the, you know. I want to let you know so you can file the divorce papers and take me And then she might be saying, okay, I'll come along and then it would be better. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you maybe you raise a good point here. Maybe that's what people should be doing. But that, but that's what I'm saying. That's why the last segment I said talk about it because if you talk about it, you might be going on a date tomorrow night, and then you might or tonight. So you know, and I know. think that's sort of the way. I mean, in some respects, I was like, 
Honey, if we don't do this, I don't know what's left. But that's what happened with us. <laughs> but it could happen to you too, so you don't know unless you open your mouth I think and this say is the, it. I think this is our last ditch attempt here. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't fuck these other people, I think we're done. Right. <laughs> what a right. strange thought. Yeah, but you know what? It worked. Yes, it did. It did work. So. It worked. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we've been in couples therapy. I think we're. I think most modern couples have done some bit of therapy. Oh yeah, there's no and, shame in that. And we even had a great therapist. And we did. And yeah, I learned a lot. But goddamn, I, I hate to say it, the two years in there. I think most of the issues that took about two years of therapy to address were addressed like in a week. <laughs> in the swing because Fuck therapy maybe even in the night because think about it you got to talk about all this shit i know we talked about everything so yeah so it's and i know i keep so saying as to it. the sex it's like every any other relationship in your, in your life use protection use common sense right you know, all that shit we heard in the use fucking protection. aids epidemic every every partner you're having sex with you're having sex with their partners in some respects right. you're always gonna have protection but also yes. don't don't also read up on what's what. There are some sexual misnomers. Like, you can't get AIDS from fucking sucking a dick. No, you can't. Unless there's blood. Right. But, I mean, if someone, you know, if someone comes has in a your bloody, face. If someone has a bloody penis, you probably won't be sucking it. That, yeah, exactly. Just, Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. You are funny. Yeah. <laughs> you, you are I'm funny, I'm not going to suck all. a bloody penis. Yes. No. Unless you're in Britain. I'm gonna suck that bloody penis over there. Is that like? Is that like a hot dog? Like, well, what, bloody's what like. Be, oh, bloody! I guess. Yeah, like a bloody good like job, mate. What are you doing mate? over there, you Brits? Yes. <laughs> with your penises. We like bloody penis over here, mate. <laughs> if you're gonna have it, it may as well be bloody, mate. <laughs> okay. Oi, 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 mate. Okay. <laughs> <a> terrible British accent. <laughs> so bad. I'm trying to be. Oy, oy, I, in all honesty, I'm trying <laughs> to be a little bad. That was very good. Oh, you were trying. I meant. Well, to if be you that. be just, it's funny. If you be know. just a little bad, it makes it awful. It does. It does. <laughs> it's worse than being awful. Yeah, that was almost as bad as your um your Mary Poppins. What's yes. his name? Yeah. Well, it was based on the same. <laughs> it was based. It was on... very loosely. It's, it's, a... <laughs> it's a more serious interpretation. <laughs> it's loosely based. Of. of What's his name? What's Pardon. his name? Hello, Mary Poppins. <laughs> what was his name? Uh, Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. Yes. But his name on the movie, I can't remember now. Ray? Uh, no, uh, Fred. Isn't it Fred? No, it wasn't no. Fred. Oh, shoot. Poor, poor old Bill. Not someone else. <laughs> 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 what is poor old Bill from? Uh, poor old Bill. <laughs> was that... Uh, was that Pirate Mary Poppins? <laughs> we watched a lot of Mary fucking Poppins with our kid. Our kid yeah, loved we it. did. Our son. And yeah. Like, I didn't watch that much Mary Poppins as a kid. Right. But. Well, now I have to look up his name. Uh, Dick Van Dyke? Bert. 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 Oh, it just Bert. came to me. Oh, Bert. Oh, Bert. I love her. It's though. a spoonful of sugar. What make the medicine yeah. go round? <laughs> See? <laughs> Subtle mess up of that last word. Change the whole tone. <laughs> I love comedy. So thanks for um for that question. Yes. It's I don't know. It felt a little snarky. It did feel a little bit. <laughs> Fuck you. Now too, I don't bitch. know if it's the way I read it. <laughs> yeah. It just seemed a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the internet's harsh. Yeah. And you know, even But I'm glad it, you put that out there because that's one of the again, it's one of those fucking goddamn questions you get. Yeah. Because I like did the get asexuals the... get. Don't you have deep dicking? Don't yeah. you need? Yeah. Which is the same thing lesbians always get, ironically. Hey, asexuals and lesbians are practically the same. So asexuals, they don't want anything. But meanwhile, you know, the lesbian brigade, they certainly do want to. Grab them by the pussy. So, you know. <laughs> so they're, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're not the same. No, they're not. Yeah. You will never hear this from an asexual. I did try she was married. <laughs> Shoot. Come on. Our president about him. elect obviously not asexual. Oof. But I don't know still what it is. an asshole. I moved on her, actually. You know, she yeah. was down in Palm Beach. I don't I think he's getting. Her, and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. It, I did try and <laughs> She was married. It's huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was. What a class act. Very heavily. In yeah. fact, I took her out furniture shopping. No, he did. He took her out she furniture shopping. Some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took off I moved in. That's Pres our president. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, the president elect of the United States. Yeah. He's such a classy, classy guy. I, I don't think he has her, sex. And I failed. I don't think he has sex. What was that? Pre uh, I'm sorry, sir. What was that? I moved on her and I failed. Oh, okay. oh. 
You failed. You You're are. Failure. You are quite the the present, sir. Okay. We want to leave you with the little commercial from our new sponsor. There's only one Tic Tac, the original Mouthwag. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Shall we uh, close the show? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, folks. If you're familiar with our other show, you probably see why we fall down little tangents like this. But <laughs> hey, if you got a chuckle at it, all the better. So next week, back to a, our normal format. We're in well, normal. We've had two episodes. <laughs> back to the guest format, wherein Erin Judge will join us. Right. She was originally supposed to be our first guest for our show. She gracefully acknowledged. And wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, she was really sweet about it, But then we ran into the scheduling issues as the actual uh, episode rolled in. Yeah. But thankfully, Mike Kaplan stepped up. And good feedback on that show. It was a great show. Yeah, we, we enjoyed we it. We enjoyed him a lot. Thank you, Mike, for breaking our Thanks, cherry Mike. with us. Yeah. <laughs> Mike did break our cherry. Yes. And it was wonderful. And so, we'll swing on by next week <laughs> with our new guest. And another episode of Tales from the Swing. Have a good week, guys.